Jim Bostic and I'm a photographer in Salem. I'd like to introduce my piece here that's called The Reclining Bicante. It is fashioned after a painting by Felix Trutat from the 1700s. And this piece was a part of my series that I call Postmodern Metamorphosis. The reason why I submitted this to the Salon de Refusé is because in 1993 I submitted this to the Pennsylvania Photographer's Annual Juried Exhibit in Marietta, Pennsylvania, where it won Best of Show. And then unfortunately, it was removed from the exhibit. My award was given to another artist. My piece was seized by the police along with four other works of art that were nudes. And we were called to the police station where we tended to be harassed for about three hours before they gave us our artwork back, which turned into a censorship lawsuit and then through the ACLU, which we were fortunate enough to receive uh, positive results from, and then donated the, uh, I don't know if I call that winnings, but the uh, cash from that to the Lancaster Museum of Art. Didn't feel right to keep it. That story continues because the piece then became part of a touring exhibit on national works that had been censored which was then again censored in Vinton, Louisiana, where the police was again seized by the police and returned after three days. So, this work of art, my reclining Picante, has quite a story behind her.
Sunday 
Salem Arts Festival has been going on now for 11 years, I think, 12 years. It was originally started by Salem Arts Association. The city took it over about 10 years ago. Um, it's a huge endeavor. Uh, we thank uh, Creative Collective and uh, Salem Main Streets for the hard work that they do making the Salem Arts Association or the Salem Arts Festival happen every year. It's a big deal. It gets bigger every year, and the bigger it gets, the harder it gets for all of our artists to participate in the exhibit at Old Town Hall. Probably about, I believe last year, about half the work that was submitted to Old Town Hall was not accepted into the festival exhibit, which broke a lot of artists' hearts. But fear not, we looked at this, we listened to the artists, and at the advice of our amazing curator, uh, Heather Murray Stewart, we came up with the idea of launching our Salon de Refusé, which I'll let Heather uh, elaborate on in a few moments. But the Salon de Refusé was designed to allow for an extension of the exhibit at the Salem Arts Festival here at Salem Arts Association to fill our walls with work that uh, didn't quite get into enough room at Salem Old Town Hall. So we thank all of the artists, the people that we're here for, and we thank all of our patrons, the people that we make art for, for being here tonight and being part of this event. So thank you all. Just a couple of other thank yous. I want to thank the, our, the stewards of our amazing landmark building, the Bridge at 211. How many people here realize that this is a Samuel McIntyre landmark? It's a really special place, and uh, we're proud to be part of uh, showing art and helping the transition of this formal universalist church into what we expect to become an amazing art center. It's going to take time. We're getting there, uh, but we're off to a pretty good start, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I would also like to thank the support of SATV, who has been documenting uh, our exhibits over and over throughout the past three years that we've been here. Uh, they're creating quite a lot of dollars for Thank you. So you, you've noticed that we haven't been here for a couple of months. We've been down at Old Town Hall. That's because the windows in this building, which uh, was built in 1890, uh, finally needed some TLC, and now thanks to a community preservation grant, uh, all of these windows have been replaced. They work, they open, uh, which is just a feat in itself, they can open the windows, um, and you don't feel like they're going to fall out when you do it. So uh, another step in restoring and bringing this amazing landmark piece of architecture back. So you know the, the Salem Arts Festival, uh, does have a lot of work in it. We've got about 70 works of art in this exhibit. Uh, they, I believe they've got a little over 100 in that exhibit. Half of the artists at Old Town Hall are Salem Arts members, and I am really proud to say that. So I'm gonna just a couple of uh, quick announcements. We've rearranged the shop. I would like you to go in there, check it out. If you're looking for anything special, birthdays, anniversaries, we love to be the place that you shop to find something special for your loved ones and friends. We have a lot coming up this summer and fall, uh, starting with in July or in August, our solo show circuit begins, which is going to feature uh, Lily Kwan in her solo show. Have we went to welcome to Yay. And we will be featuring her solo show, uh, which we are very excited to see, followed by Dan Breslin, whose solo show will follow through in August. These are going to be two really amazing exhibits. Um, these are the types of things, along with exhibits like this, that make this place really feel like an art institution. So we thank the artists for stepping up and bringing their work in. We very much look forward to seeing that. At this point, I would like to introduce Heather Marie Stewart. She is our uh, curator extraordinaire. Uh, spends countless hours hanging these exhibits and making everything perfect. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. I'd like to thank 
working with the exhibitions committee who does an incredible job um, helping me hang. Um, you, 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 oh, can't hear you. I want to thank my exhibitions committee who does an incredible <coughs> job helping me hang these exhibits. You know who you are. Anybody who's interested in learning about hanging exhibits, which is an art in and of itself, is welcome to meet up with me after I set down this microphone and we can talk about having you join <coughs> our committee. So um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank our, um, our juror, um, Dr. Dina Gilby, who's a professor at Endicott College. She received her PhD in art history with a dissertation, Weeping Rocks, the Stone Transformation of Niobe and Her Children from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where she also received her master's degree. Her bachelor's degrees in English literature and classical humanities were obtained from St. Louis University in St. Louis, Missouri. She has held positions in the Wisconsin Percent for Art Program and <coughs> internship at the St. Louis Art Museum at the Getty Research Institute. Prior to arriving at Endicott College in 1997, Dr. Gilby taught a survey of art history at Montserrat College of Art. Dr. Gilby's research is broad-based and covers a variety of chronological periods, but is united by its focus on identity. In addition to her teaching of a variety of periods and themes within the history of art, Dr. Gilby also acts as a faculty, faculty leader at Endicott College's Spanish cultural course held each January in Madrid, Spain. We're incredibly lucky to have her and here during the exhibit and her expertise in um, and during and um, in her expertise and I'm going to actually she's going to be talking to you a little bit more about the 1863 Salon de Refuse in Paris. Um, I'm also going to now announce the award winners which um, Dr. Philby may uh, choose to speak about or just speak about the exhibit in general. Again, um, we're very honored to have her here. We're also very honored to have such wonderful members. So um, without further ado, the first place award goes to Dan Breslin for his spatial temporal yes. number two. Um, Jim said um, Daniel is going to have a solo exhibit in August, and he's also a member of the exhibitions committee who has been incredibly, incredibly helpful in with hanging shows, advising about where pieces should go, and I'm incredibly and great, grateful, grateful to him. Second place goes to Sue Dodge for her swimmers. And, um, Susan is another beloved member of the arts community here in Salem and in Peabody in Arcworks and in the North Shore in general. Third place tie goes to Amelia Leonard's for Holdress and Susan Schrader for Road Trip Number Two. Those are both beautiful pieces. I hope you have a chance to look to take a look at them. Um, Giacomo Gallo's Teatro di Pazzo is uh, one of our honorable mentions. Ali um, Aloha James Bodhisattva Jomi is another piece that won an honorable mention. And Zenevia Limbarakis' Sanctified Ouija Board number three is our third honorable mention. Zen is another person who is on our exhibitions committee and has worked tirelessly for this organization. Um, she's a dear friend, so I want to thank her here now, too. So um, now I'm going to hand the microphone over to someone who's probably a lot more better speaking in front of it than I am, and Dr. Dina Gilby. I don't know about that. <laughs> I really just want to thank you, Heather, for inviting me to jury this show. And I won't take a lot of time, and I hope I won't bore you. I'll just give you a little bit of background on the Siglan uh, de Refuse itself. Uh, like what happened at the um, Salem Arts Festival, more than half the works in 1863 were rejected by the Academy jury, and uh, artists complained vociferously about this to Napoleon III. <laughs> And he decided to set up an alternate exhibit that was doors away from 
the Academy exhibit. And um, there were uh, a bit over 1,200 works, 781 of them were published in the catalog because they had three weeks to get everything together, including the hanging, the catalog, the writing, and everything else. Um, and although Napoleon III's reasons for setting up the salon were not altruistic, it wasn't because he just loved art, um, it was more to curry favor with the public, to be seen as someone who was progressive, or at least someone who was responsive to the people and to artists. That exhibit um, is one that has been seen to be kind of a watershed for the opening up of and of artists of the avant-garde that they felt emboldened and they started to to um, set up organizations and after the Salon de Refusé of 1873, they started to exhibit and to start the Salon des Independents and the Salon de Tom and other things. And they started to branch out from the strict hierarchy of subjects that had such a stranglehold, as well as the material explorations or what was considered to be good art by um, the Academy, and they really started to experiment and explore and were emboldened in that. It's not that they weren't doing it, it was that it was now getting disseminated to a larger public. And so I thought about that as I was walking through the exhibit, and I have to say you all made my job very difficult to choose just a few works because I really want to congratulate all the artists. I think that seeing your works and the way that you're exploring materially and with subject matter is just really exciting and I think it carries on that whole spirit of the Salon de Refusé and um, so it was very hard, in fact I couldn't choose just three, I had to choose four um, to do, um, you know, to get the prizes but I think that I just want to congratulate everyone because I think all the works are really great and um, you know you just made it really uh, difficult on me. So thank you very much. Thank you. I was just going to do that with your own, so. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. So we've been listening tonight to the really amazing music of Johnny Fireseed and the Gentleman. Uh, in, in keeping with our creative themes, you might notice that a lot of these musical instruments are handmade. Oh. I'd like to invite Patina to come up and tell you a little bit more about the music that they make and the instruments that they're playing. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I, our purpose is, uh, is to create art from recycled materials. So we call it art with a repurpose. Um, so what we do is um, um, we're a group of artists and uh, technicians and uh, engineers, and we work with machines and uh, transform junk into new value art or musical instruments or furniture. Um, so this is just a little selection of the instruments. Uh, that's a trash pick bass. There's a lot of um, a lot of um, computer parts in there and uh, Victorian furniture. <laughs> parts. Here's a handle from a shed. Um, they, sometimes the, the cabinets themselves are also, these, these used to be shelves. Um, this was a, uh, a kitchen counter oh my God. from a brownstone building in Boston. Whoa, that's really Still nice. some evidence there. <laughs> <laughs> Cooking. <laughs> Um, does anybody remember the Edgewater Cafe? Yeah. So the former owner, Dennis, uh, rest in peace, he had a, a walnut tree in his yard that got struck by lightning and uh, gave me a log. Right, so that, that's this piece right there. A uh, button for my grandmother's sewing kit. Uh, this, this is made from pallets. This is made from floorboards. And uh, old carpet strips. Yeah, you want to hear this? Oh, Joe. Uh, this, this is Joe, by the way. This is Joe on bass. 
So, yeah, so I met, um, I started um, working with students from UMass Lowell. Uh, uh, Joe was part of that program. And um, we made the world's, we think we made the world's largest xylophone. Yeah. It, was, it was 150 feet long. Oh my God. And, uh, and, it, and it had hundreds of people playing on it simultaneously. <laughs> uh, so Joe helped me tune that. This, this, is, uh, this is not from that, but it's a little small piece. And uh, it's tuned to pentatonics, if you know what that means. Penta means five. So there's five notes in, uh, in three octave scales. So let's hear what that sounds like. So uh, that guitar uh, there is made from, um, it was a florist shop countertop <laughs> and some Victorian furniture stuff. Uh, that one was with an old LP box and it's got an LP as a grill cover. So that's just a little sampling of, of the stuff that we do. We, we do workshops with kids, we go into schools, we teach kids how to make instruments. We teach them how to play their instruments. We get them playing along with a band. We write songs with them. We do composition workshops. So if you wanted to get this program into your school, take a card. We also have albums out. Um, there's a review of the band in Metronome magazine. It's free. I have a bunch of free copies here if you want to learn more. <laughs> so Jim, thank you very much for. Thank you. So. We invite everybody to stick around for another hour or so, enjoy the music, enjoy the exhibit, and we encourage all of you to next visit Old Town Hall and enjoy the official opening reception for the Salem Arts Festival and hang out downtown all week long for an amazing lineup of music, artists, performers, dance. Uh, who knows what you see? Um, enjoy your beautiful weekend in Salem. Thank you. Thank you.